of RISD was approved in the United States uh, in August 2020. It's an oral molecule. That means it's taken by mouth. And that has several important advantages, actually. Uh, it is broadly distributed throughout the body. So it gets to the brain, it can get to the spinal cord, it gets to uh, respiratory uh, system, muscles that have, you know, help you with breathing. And as an oral molecule, it's also uh, durable. You can continue to dose throughout life to ensure that we're providing the benefit to patients throughout their lifetime. And that's really important because spinal muscular atrophy is a genetic disease. The genetic defect persists throughout life. Uh, and so you need to make sure that you have treatment that is able to address the disease throughout the life of an individual. Also, I must comment as well that being launched, uh, the, the approval and launch of, uh, of RISD during COVID, the ability to have an oral molecule, something that patients can take at home uh, that doesn't need to be administered through any type of procedure or invasive procedure is incredibly powerful uh, because obviously the thought of travel, especially with small children traveling to a hospital to have an invasive procedure uh, is challenging in any, any time, but even more so in the time of COVID. And so to be able to have an oral molecule or a drug that you can take by mouth uh, that delivers significant benefit uh, it is incredibly important. And, uh, and, and that's exactly what we've been observing. Very, uh, very nice start to the launch of, of RISD plan. I'll, I'll mention that to date, there's been over 2,500 patients in the world who've been treated with RISD, and that includes patients in clinical trials, compassionate use, uh, and real world settings. Uh, with patients aging from two months to over 70 years of age. And that also includes patients who've been treated with other SMA targeted therapies. And since the approval in August of 2020, there's been a broad range of SMA patients taking a RISD, including infants as young as two months old uh, to adults over the age of 70. Uh, and it also includes those who had previously not received any SMA treatment, as well as those who switched from another SMA therapy. I'll also mention that about 25% of those who've been prescribed of RISD since approval uh, have type 1 SMA, uh, and about 50% have type 2, and 25% have type 3. So the practice thus far is mirroring exactly what we have in the development program, which is a mix of type 1, type 2, and, and type 3 SMA patients.